being described as black lesbian mother warrior and poet is an aspiration like wow that is a description <laughs> Hi, welcome back and if you're new here my name is Daniela and in today's video I want to talk about this bad boy can you see that wait let me just so in today's video I want to talk about the penguin modern box set this was a gift from Ella thank you very much and um, I just want to talk about this so this book set has 50 books this is the modern book set it's like a teal color. Penguin also has the uh, little black book collection, uh, like classic one. Uh, so yeah, let's go through this. Let me just unwrap it so you can see it. Oh, so satisfying. Whoa. Okay, this is the book set. These are all the books, as you can see. Again, there are 50 of them. And I'm going to go through all of them and talk about them. Also, this is the box for those curious. Has a little penguin. I want to show you the back too. It says that it's like 80 pounds, but again, it depends on what country you buy from, what retailer, it just, it's very subjective. So I don't know why they would put the price, but it is what it is. So yeah, again, I'm going to go through every single book and talk about them. So let me move my desk. How should I do it? Let me take them out and then I'm going to put them back in. Okay, so let's go through them in order. So the first one, is Martin Luther King Jr. letter from uh, Birmingham jail. This, can you see that? This landmark missive uh, from one of the greatest activists in history calls for direct nonviolent resistance in the fight against racism and reflects on the healing power of love. This is the first one. And we're going to slowly put them back. That's the plan. The second one, this is uh, Aylan Ginsberg. The television television was a baby crawling towards the death chamber. This is a profane and prophetic verses about sex, death, revolution, and America by the great icon of beat poetry. Number three. This is uh, The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier. Um, a scientist's attempt to solve the mystery of life after death has chilling consequences. In this eerie tale from a virtuoso writer of suspense. Also, all the books have a little uh, two pound mark at the back. Cause, can you see that? If it will only focus. Just trust me. Cause a lot of these books are sold separately. Well. All of them I'm pretty sure so if you want to buy a specific book you can do that as well I just I wanted the whole box set so this was in book number three number four we have the custard heart by Dorothy Parker uh, wisecracking and heartbreaking these tales of women on the edge by the legendary wit Dorothy Parker show the darkness beneath the surface of the jazz age number five you see that uh, this is three Japanese short stories by Akutagawa and others. Three beguiling, strange, funny, and hair-rising tales of imprisonment, memory, and atrocity from early 20th century Japan. Number six, uh, The Veiled Woman by Anais Nin. Transgressive desires and sexual encounters are recounted in these four pieces from one of the greatest writers of erotic fiction. Number seven, we have Notes of Nationalism from George Orwell, biting and timeless reflections on patriotism, prejudice, and power from the man who wrote about his nation better than anyone. Number eight, this is Food by Gertrude Stein, 
uh, from apples to artichokes, these glittering fragmented painter painterly portraits of food by the avant-garde pioneer Gertrude Stein are redolent of sex, laughter, and the joy of everyday life. Number nine. This is The Three Electron Knights by Stanislaw Lem. Um, from a giant of 20th century science fiction, these four miniature space epics feature crazy inventors, surreal worlds, robot kings, and madcap machines. Number 10. The Great Hunger by Patrick Kavanagh. By turns, tragic and comedic, irrational and exalted, these are some of the best love poems by a writer who transformed Irish verse. 11. The Legend of the Sleepers by Danilo Kiss. Uh, sleepers awake in a remote cave and the ancient mystic Simon Magus attempts a miracle in these two magical, otherworldly tales from one of the greatest voices of 20th century Europe. They're slowly building up and I love to see that. Number 12. Uh, the Black Bull by Rock Ellison. Uh, stories of belonging and alienation, violence and beauty, racial injustice and unexpected kindness from a writer of soaring emotion and lyricism. Number 13. Uh, Till September Petronella by Jean Rhys. Uh, four searing stories of women lost adrift down, but not quite out that span the course of a lifetime from a Caribbean childhood to rigorous adulthood to old age and beyond. Slight intermission as I went with my mom to the supermarket, but I'm back. Okay, so 14. This is Investigations of a Dog by Franz Kafka. How does a dog see the world? How do any of us? In this playful and enigmatic story of a canine philosopher, Kafka explores the limits of knowledge. 15. This is Daydream and Drunkenness of a Young Lady by Clarice Lispector. Uh, three intoxicating tales of three women, their secret desires, fears and madnesses from a giant of Brazilian literature. I'm so excited that there's so many different authors and there's such a big range that you get to explore and discover so many different new names, at least for me. So really looking forward to all of these. 16, an advertisement for toothpaste by Ryszard Kapuscinski. I will learn how to pronounce his name. Uh, the great traveler reporter finds an even stranger and more exotic society in his own home of post-war Poland than in any of the distant lands he has visited. I put it slightly closer to myself. So this is 17. This is Create Dangerously by Albert Camus. Camus argues passionately that the artist has a responsibility to challenge, provoke and speak up for those who cannot in this powerful speech accompanied here by two others. Then we have the 18th. This is The Vigilante by John Steinbeck. In these searing stories set in California's Salinas Valley, one of America's greatest, most humane writers explores mob violence, a disturbing encounter and a bitter betrayal. 19. This is I Have More Souls Than One by Fernando Pessoa. Written in the voices of four different alter egos, this rich, strange and mesmeric verses by Portugal's greatest poet express a maelstrom of conflicted thoughts and feelings. Number 20. This is The Missing Girl by Shirley Jackson. Malice, deception and creeping dread lie beneath the surface of ordinary American life in these miniature masterworks. 21. This is four Russian short stories by Gazdanov and others. In these stories, four writers, all exiles from revolutionary Russia, explore four deaths in a world in which all certainties have crumbled. Then we have 22, The Distance of the Moon by Italo Calvino. These exuberant, endlessly inventive stories interweave scientific fact with wordplay, whimsy and cosmic flights of fancy in a strange and wondrous universe. 23. 
This is The Master's Tool Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audre Lorde. From the self-described black lesbian mother warrior poet, these soaring urgent essays of the power of women, poetry and anger are filled with darkness and light. Also being described as black lesbian mother warrior and poet is an aspiration. Like, wow, that is a description. 24. This is The Skeleton's Holiday by Leonora Carrington. These dreamlike carnivalesque fables by one of the leading lights of the surrealist movement are masterpieces of invention and grand wignol humor. I'm learning so many words as well. We are halfway there. This is the 25th book. This is The Finger by William S. Burroughs. A deliberately severed finger, a junkie's Christmas miracle, and a Tongier con artist, among others, feature in these hallucinogenic sketches and stories from the infamous Beat legend. 26. The End by Samuel Beckett. From the master of the absurd, these stories of unnamed vagrants contending with decay and death combine bleakness with the blackest of humor. 27. This is New York City in 1979 by Kathy Acker. A tale of art, sex, blood, junkies, and whores in New York's underground from cult literary icon Kathy Acker. Acker? I don't know. Then we have 28. This is Africa's Tarnished Name by Chinua Akebe. Electrifying essays on the history, complexity, and appropriation of a continent from the father of modern African literature. So many names. I am loving it. Loving it. This is 29. This is Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. Uh, it reminds me of that Matt Gala. <laughs> These two classic essays were the first works of criticism to break down the boundaries between high and low culture and made Susan Sontag a literary sensation. We've reached 30. This is the 30th book. This is The Red Tenda of Bologna by John Berger. A dreamlike meditation on memory, food, paintings, and a fond uncle and the improbable beauty of Bologna from the visionary thinker and art critic. 31. This is The Gigolo by Francois Sagan. Um, this is a middle-aged woman breaks with her young lover. A husband is suspected of infidelity. A dying man reflects on his extramarital affairs in this shimmering, bittersweet tales of desire and disillusionment. Can you see me sweating? Because the weather is absolutely crazy. <laughs> 32. This is Glittering City by Cyprian Equincy. Untrustworthy, charming, fussy Joe spin tale tales and breaks hearts in the rollicking story set in the sensational city of 1960s Lagos. 33. Uh, Peers of the Homeless Men by Jack Kerouac. Soaring, freewheeling snapshots of life on the road across America from the beat writer who inspired a generation. This is 34. Why Do You Wear a Cheap Watch by Hans Falando. Uh, darkly funny, streetwise tales of low lives, grifters, and ordinary people trying to make ends meet in pre war Germany. 35. This is The Duke in His Domain by Truman Capote. This mesmerizing profile of an insecure, vulnerable young Marlon Brando brooding in a Kyoto hotel during a break from filming is a peerless piece of journalism. 36. Leaving the Yellow House by Sol Bellow. A stubborn, hard-drinking elderly woman living in a desert town finds herself faced with an impossible choice. In this caustically funny, precisely observed tale from an American prose master. 37. The Cracked Looking Glass by Catherine Ann Porter. A passionate, unfulfilled woman considers her life and her marriage in this moving novella by one of America's finest short story writers. 38. Dark Days by James Baldwin. Drawing on Baldwin's own experiences of prejudice in an America violently divided by race, these searing essays blend the intensely personal with the political to 
envisage a better world. I can't pronounce the word envisage. Envisage? Who knows? 39. This is Letter to My Mother by George Simenon. Uh, George Simenon's stark confessional letter to his dead mother explores the complexity of parent-child relationships and the bitterness of things unsaid. 40. This is Death the Barber uh, by William Carlos Williams. Uh, filled with bright, unforgettable images, this deceptively simple work of William Carlos Williams revolutionized... His name is William Carlos Williams. I just realized that. Okay, <laughs> one more time. Filled with bright, unforgettable images, the deceptively simple world work of William Carlos Williams revolutionized American verse and made him one of the greatest 20th century poets. 41. This is The Problem That Has No Name by Betty Friedan. The pioneering Betty Friedan gave voice to countless American housewives who, despite being sold a dream of the perfect home and family, silently wondered, is this all? And set the women's movement in motion. It's getting full and I love that. Just, just a few more, okay? This is 42. Uh, the Dialogue of Two Snails by Federico Garcia Lorca. A dazzling selection of the beautiful, brutal, and darkly bl brilliant work of Spain's greatest 20th century poet, from his beloved gypsy ballads to pieces appearing in English for the first time. 43. Of Dogs and Walls by Yuko Tsushima. Two luminous, tender stories from one of Japan's greatest 20th century writers showing how childhood memories, dreams, and fleeting encounters shape our lives. 44. This is Madame du Defont and the Idiots by Javier Marias. Five sparkling, irrelevant, brief portraits of famous literary figures, including libertines, eccentrics, and rogues from Spain's greatest living writer. 45. This is The Haunted Boy by Carson McCullers. From a master of Southern Gothic, these moving stories portray love, sorrow, and our search for happiness and understanding. It's getting full. Okay, please fit a few more. Okay. 46. The Garden of Forking Paths by George Louis Borges. Fantastic tales of mazes, puzzles, lost labyrinths, and bookish mysteries from the unique imagination of a literary magician. 47. Fame by Andy Warhol. The legendary pop artist Andy Warhol's hilarious gossipy vignettes and aphorisms on the topics of love, fame, and beauty. 48. The Survivor by Primo Levi. From the writer who bore witness to the 20th century's darkest day, these verses of beauty and horror include the poem that inspired the title of his memoir, If This Is a Man. 49. Lens by Vladimir Nabukov. These three dazzling stories of obsession, mania, and, ex and extraterrestrial nightmare feature all the wit, dexterity, and inventiveness that are the hallmarks of Nabucco's genius. And the last book, the 50th book. This is Why I Am Not Going to Buy a Computer by Wendell Berry. The great American poet, novelist, and farmer argues for life lived slowly and the value of home. So this is the last one. Let's put it here. And those are all the books. I'm extremely excited to read every single one of these, especially now that I have read the backs with you to just get an idea. And I'm like so excited. There's so many different authors from so many different uh, backgrounds. And this will also benefit my reading around the world because I'm trying to read um, at least one book from everything written by an author that was born from every single country around the world. So this is going to be great. I might even make a series just reading these. So I'm very excited and I hope you come along on this journey. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, please tell me, do you have a favorite from any of these? And have you read any of them? Have you loved any of them? I'm really curious. Please leave a like, a comment, and please consider subscribing. So you are with me on this journey. So yeah, 
again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls Also, do you like my dress? I think like I look like a little ballerina or a swan or something like that. I just, I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs>